Welcome to this short poster presentation at Transformative Play Initiative Seminar 22. My name is Leonard Bartenstein and I would like to introduce to you a concept for using live action role playing as a method in cognitive behavioral therapy. I am a psychologist and I'm speaking to you from my practice two kilometers away from historic Hadeby, which some of you might know. Role-playing is a classic part of cognitive behavioral therapy, abbreviated CBT. And one goal of CBT is to learn new behavior which is helpful for the patient. For example, if someone is too shy to have satisfying relationships, then in CBT we can work to manage that situation through targeted training. Such trainings are so-called social skills trainings. The parallel between the skills trainings in the CBT sense and LARP is relatively obvious. In both cases, I go into a role in a protected setting to try myself. In both formats, the four levels that are important for sustainable learning from the point of view of CBT are activated. And these levels are cognitions, emotions, behavior, and body awareness. There are already some ideas about how LARP and psychotherapy can be combined, and I would like to recommend the article by Elektra Liakulambriano at nordiclab.org. There is still no program that uses LARP as a tool in ACBT, and it has not yet been checked whether such an intervention really works and whether it is effective. We, that means me and a team of health professionals, have developed such a lab. And this is structured like an intervention in a group therapy. So you have five to nine participants. These participants don't need to have any experience with role playing in any form. And as you can see here at the beginning, you have three preparatory sessions, each is 90 minutes. And the goal in this preparatory sessions is mainly for each player to find one to a maximum of three new behaviors that he or she can try out in role. Now in session one it all begins with a problem analysis and the goal setting for each individual participant. Um, that means we are talking about the situations in daily life which are uh, difficult for the participants where they say I want to change this, I want new behavior, I want to train new behavior to master these situations in a better way. And um, we are explaining the rationale of therapeutic role play and having a little test run. This has nothing to do with fantasy role-playing at the beginning, but this is just classic CBT role-playing. Then in session two, we're explaining the concept um, of LARP and LARP, LARP therapy, and we are starting to create a LARP character. Um, this LARP character should fit to this new target behavior I want to train from session one. This all um, takes place in the group with support of the group, the other group members and the therapist who is moderating the group. The therapist is later on also the game master. Between session two and session three there's the homework to work on the lab characters and in session three to finish this work on the lab characters. Mm. And then we are preparing the game. Then follows session four. And this is um, the most important and most exciting session maybe um, because it's the lab itself, the CBT lab. And in the test runs that we've made um, that took about five hours that takes place in a suitable place, um, it's classic fantasy setting in the forest. And the plot now contains situations that challenge individual aspects of social skills, as they are named in the literature. 
For example, there is one situation, one plot station with one NPC where you have to stand for your rights. So here, for example, um, the title of this plot station is Enforcing One's Right. The NPCs are also trained professionals from the field of education or therapy and they are all principally available for supportive talk during the game. But the therapist who are also moderates the preparatory sessions is the main contact person. So he or she is all the time um, together with the participants. And the end of the training session um, takes place in, a, in the group again, together with all participants, the therapist and the NPCs, to give feedback to each individual. Here you can see such a sheet that we are using at the beginning for the problem analysis with the patient or participant and um, the target behavior, which is written down here, mm. but after all, this is classic CBT, so you can find similar sheets in, in other programs. The program then includes two follow-up sessions, and here the focus on the transfer into a daily life. So how can I use the experiences that I made in the lab for my everyday life? As, as I said at the beginning, we are also evaluating this lab and we want to find out whether participation in the lab leads to the participants experiencing themselves as more socially competent afterwards and therefore having fewer psychological symptoms. Our sample consisted of six people who suffered from at least one mental illness. And it was also important that these people were already in therapy so that the lab only represents an additional intervention because that's how it's intended. And we have shortened the preparation time for the current pilot study to one longer session but with the opportunity to have more one-on-one -on -one talks with me. At the beginning of the preparation the participants filled out a bundle of scientific questionnaires from clinical psychology and these questionnaires are screenings for the symptoms of mental disorders. And in addition qualitative questions were asked to the participants so they could write some free text. For the current pilot study we use a pre-post follow-up design. This means that the participants fill out the same questionnaires three times. Once during the preparatory meeting, once two weeks after the lab and once three months after the lab. Now, Our hypothesis is that there are less mental symptoms in these questionnaires after the lab than before. This pilot study is a first of several planned studies. Afterwards, we want to carry out quantitative tests with a larger sample. Yeah, first findings. The first finding is maybe it can work out. <laughs> that means uh, participants already said that uh, they can use the experiences they have made in the lab for their daily life. They remember situations they have mastered and managed in the lab and then said, ah, I can use this knowledge, this feeling, this behavior for the real life. Another thing I would already say is, um, as at the beginning I said, um, you can find one to three target behaviors. I would now say after some test runs, um, you should concentrate on one target behavior and work on that. That's all enough. Now I hope you have a lot of fun with the other exciting lectures. Thank you for your attention and you're very welcome to contact me for further exchange.